Hello everyone. In the last few days I've received many hundreds of emails and direct messages on social media. Messages of rock solid support. These are in respect of the recent posts that I've made about the Idris Shah Foundation, to which of course I was a founder member and which I believe has been essentially hijacked. As a consequence of this, it is sliding precariously off the rails. Most of the supportive messages that I've received are from people who don't actually know me personally, but like me, they regard my father's work and his legacy as being of astonishing importance. In addition to the hundreds of messages that have come my way, messages, as I say, of support, I've received a handful from people who have questioned why I would be so brazen as to stick my head above the parapet as I'm doing and as I will continue to do. I want to explain my actions and I'm here now to do just that. As you may recall, in November last year, I posted a video in which I highlighted the absolutely, what I would call contemptible behavior of ISF's trustees and its CEO. And that message was posted shortly after I had been terminated by ISF. The various ISF projects I had initiated and run for almost a decade had been shut down one by one and the official reason for my termination was essentially given because I no longer had an active project or active projects. It was a neat piece of footwork which, as I understand it, was dreamt up by ISF's charity lawyers to get rid of me. Since I posted that video message, my twin sister, Safia, has now resigned from ISF. I'm not going to comment on her reasons as they are her business and they're certainly not mine. She is, as you may have seen online, continuing her work towards our father's legacy through her wonderful new organization, Cash Fees Children. The fact that the two of us, two out of three of Idrishar's children, both of us founder members of ISF are now outside the organization has given a great deal of you reason for concern, and I would say quite rightly so. Alas though, it's the tip of an iceberg of concern. Just over a year ago, two of the three ISF trustees, both of them hugely respectable and respected people, resigned their positions on the very same day, leaving only the chair of the trustees all alone at ISF. I wish I could comment on this, but in doing so, ISF would no doubt serve me with some creatively dreamt up legal suit. From the experience of the last two years, when the charity was essentially hijacked, that's the way things have been. As I have drawn attention to in social media posts this week, ISF's trustees have no direct communication at all with the estate of Idris Shah, the entity which owns my father's copyrights, or in plain speak, um, my two sisters and I. Indeed, they resort to horrifyingly costly charity lawyers when they want to communicate with us in any way. Imagine that, an organization that is so utterly eroded from its original form, that it no longer trusts those people who established it in the first place, the people who are surely best placed to know how it ought to operate. As a result, ISF has spent tens of thousands of pounds merely in communicating with my sisters and I and locking us into agreements that stretch decades into the future. Again, I can hear some of you asking why I am not biting my lip. I suppose doing so would be what the English would call good form, but I'm not like that. And the answer is this. There is one thing of ultimate importance to me and one thing alone 
It is ensuring that my father's work and his legacy remain true. Some of you knew him. You knew my father personally and others know him through his publications and his wider work. Knowing him personally or through his publications both give a sense of values and how he thought. But unlike most everyone else, except for my sisters and me, I have had the privilege to have known him as a father. Despite the fact that some people seem to imagine they know better, I would suggest they don't. Shortly before my father died of heart failure towards the end of 1996, I was alone with him and we were talking about life and about the future. In that conversation, which I actually published in a book called In Arabian Nights quite a long time ago, he said something which is with me always. He said, one day soon, and I'm not sure quite when, when I'm not here, some people we have always trusted will betray us. Others will step forward as truest friends, people who were in the shadows until now. That is exactly what has happened. And the more I think of it, the more it affects me. Certain people, some whom had been relied upon for our, by us all as, you know, friends and for their support over decades, have stabbed us in the back. And more importantly, they've stabbed my father in the back, while others have appeared as if from nowhere, and they have selflessly given their help. Those of you who knew my father personally would, I am sure, be the very first to appreciate that I would not be speaking out if I did not feel it absolutely imperative to do so. Please understand that. Just because it bears my father's name, Idris Shah Foundation is not my father. It no longer operates according to the values that he would wish it to do so. And in my opinion, and it has most certainly run off the rails in the last two years and been run off the rails by people whose behavior would no doubt have made my father well beyond incandescent with rage. As you can imagine, neither the trustees nor the CEO of ISF have reached out to me since my video in November. Intriguingly though, they did send a rather blithering message to their mailing list. In my opinion, it's the kind of thing worthy of a political leadership that found itself on the ropes around about the same time. If I hear from ISF at all, and I imagine that I will ultimately do so, it will no doubt be through their lawyers, and why not? After all, the chair of the trustees seems set to exhaust the foundation's precious funds, not on releasing my father's work, but in covering the invoices of the creme de la creme world in charity lawyers. Before I finish, I ought to stress again that this message and any others that I post are of my own opinion and my opinion alone Although, as I've said, many of the hundreds of supportive messages I've received in the recent days are just that, supportive, and they are sent from people I would consider real friends of, and fans of good sense and friends of our family. As we push forward into the new year, it is my sincerest hope that those who have assumed power and have done so much damage in such a remarkably short time at ISF, will think to move on and allow the Idris Shah Foundation to get back on track once again. Thank you so much for watching this.